finally pulp done right. Disney Plus Hotstar Showtime from Dharmatic Entertainment takes us into the glitz, glamour, gossip, magic and mayhem of the Hindi film industry. Once again, Hotstar has done that desperate for subscription split a season into two parts thing, which unfortunately does no favours to a series like this. Either way, let's break down the first four episodes, shall we? Warning, mild spoilers ahead for the first episode of Showtime. Created by Sumit Roy, Showtime follows the succession drama unfolding within the fictional YRF-style production house Victory Studios. Founded by revered and respected yesteryear filmmaker Victor Khanna, played by who else but the great Nasiruddin Shah, Victory Studios has a rich 40-year legacy of making beloved films. Except now, the studio is run by Victor's gloriously arrogant, self-serving son, Raghu Khanna, played by a scenery-chewing, show-making Imran Hashmi. Raghu has been unapologetically churning out one soulless blockbuster after another. He may have kept the studio afloat and the money coming in, but he's run its credibility into the ground. Forever at loggerheads, father and son don't see eye to eye, coming from two opposing schools of thought. Raghu comes from a simple philosophy. There are only two kinds of films, hits and flops. For him, the movies are all projects, proposals, profit and box office. Whereas for his more artistically inclined father, Victor, in his own words, cinema dhanda nahi dharm hai. Kutar, cinema dhanda nahi dharm hai then there's cub reporter Mahika Nandi, played by Mahima Makwana. Mahika makes headlines when she's asked to review Victory Studios' latest silly action film. But instead of doing as she's told by her editor and accepting the studio's customary bribe to give this terrible film a glowing four-star rating, she stands her ground, tells the truth, calls out the studio and is fired for it. Quick side note, me, never been offered a bribe, not even once. Would I take it? Hell no, but like what, am I not good enough to be asked? Be nice to be included, you know? In this show, she's bribed with an iPhone. Bro, I'd be flattered with a Nokia 5210. No, a keychain, a freaking fridge magnet. Whatever, I don't care, screw it. Anyway, when Victor passes away, through his will, he dictates that the studio be left not to Raghu, who's been currently running it, but instead to his secret granddaughter from his first marriage that no one knew about. Who else but Mahika Nandi? Writers Sumit Roy, Lara Chandni and Mithun Gangopadhyay, along with directors Mihir Desai and Arjit Kumar, give us a fish-out-of-water story of an idealistic, movie-loving cub reporter with no experience in filmmaking who's given the keys to the kingdom. Mahika must find her feet, keep the company afloat, make movie magic and fight off her now dethroned nemesis, Raghu Khanna, who's made it his mission to sabotage her every move. With all this set against the bewitching, bewildering, bedazzling, banging world of Bollywood and show business. It's a bloody juicy premise and thankfully, Showtime shines when Netflix's Call My Agent Bollywood fell flat on its face. Unlike that unfortunate show, here we get a campy, pulpy, guilty pleasure drama about the Hindi film industry that feels familiar and rooted in our reality. Showtime uses the cartoonish characters, outsized egos, immeasurable insecurity, fabulous fakeness, savage sucking up and matlabi to the max nature of the film industry as an arena for melodrama and excess, with Anand Bhaskar's booming score bringing the massive masala energy. Showtime unapologetically busts out all the buzzwords and hits all the hashtags. Reviews versus box office, art versus commercial, movie stars versus actors, talent versus popularity, Insider versus Outsider. Not to mention a steady stream of cameos from the likes of Badsha, Minunal Thakur, Hansal Mehta, Nitesh Tiwari, and Vasan Bala. But much like the heartthrob track from Rocky Orani, it's the charming Janmi Kapoor cameo that leaves the biggest impression. When she bumps into the sudden overnight studio head Mahika at a restaurant, she says, You've got centre stage at the big boy's table, so congratulations. But the show's most enjoyable achievement is the deliciously cocky, smug, and single minded Raghu Khanna. I can't remember the last time I had this much fun watching Imran Hash. For Raghu, everyone's a means to an end. You're either of use or you aren't. He's the short-tempered, ego-driven, pompous producer who's forever sucking up to movie stars and then bitching them out behind their backs with equal zeal. Raghu's most enjoyable face-offs are with superstar in desperate need of a hit, Arman Singh, played by a playful Rajiv Khandelwal. Meri film star bolta hai. Flop pe flop de chuka hai. Ab ek aur flop de. Arman lives in a mansion called Jannat. He has a Jyotish who sits in on his narrations to help him choose scripts. He even wants to do a period historical film with parkour action. But I enjoyed him a lot more when the series takes him more seriously and goes beyond the low-hanging fruit diva behavior and controversy. Arman is an interesting mix of shallow, calculating and insecure, forever ready to tear down anyone around him who threatens to upstage him or throw him out of the spotlight. The moves that must be made, the price that must be paid to stay on top. 
but not all the characters managed to make their mark. The weak link here is the undercooked character of Mahika Nandi. The wildly inexperienced Mahika is supposed to be everything Raghu isn't. Kind, decent and human, but she's little more than a concept. Good person slash underdog. You're rooting for the idea of her more than the actual person. Throughout the series, various financiers and film stars who meet her keep saying, there's something about her, this girl has spark, and you feel none of it. Characters literally have to keep telling us to convince us that she's special. It doesn't help that Mahima Makwana fails to go beyond the surface and do much with the role. She struggles to do justice to the heightened melodramatic pitch of the series, particularly in the scenes which require her to be badass and intimidating and hold her own against Raghu. Over these four episodes, you barely feel a sense of growth or transformation, aside from the fancier clothes she wears. It's never a good sign when you find yourself more invested in a story's antagonist. Today's mantra is two hours. Look, eat and eat. It's called Blockbuster. Showtime works best when it's at its most unhinged and is looking to just cut loose and have a blast with its backstabbing greed, ambition and power struggles, rather than when it takes itself too seriously like an odd, out-of-place domestic violence arc. This enforced mid-season break also certainly doesn't help, fracturing the narrative just when it feels like the series was heating up and finding its mojo. Either way, I'm all in for more unapologetic madness and I look forward to more pompous, posturing power trips, tantrums and delectable drama. You can watch Showtime on Disney Plus Hotstar. Friends, this is not the same course where you think that a teacher is giving you knowledge. This is the same course where you think that in your college canteen, a senior student who has spent time in this campus, is telling you a little bit about it. It's a great fun in this course. You will join us in the screen writing master class. See you there. Thank you for watching Showtime. Thank you for watching Showtime. Thank you for watching Showtime.